Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overhaul LaunchFest and Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. I had previously done a LaunchFest video for RO and 1.3.1, mainly to answer the question of what version of KSP RO was available for, and since RO has been updated for 1.6.1, I decided to continue that tradition. That said, I don't know the status of the RP1 career mode mod. This is the Angara 1 from Deku, and it seems to work just fine in 1.6.1 as it has done in previous versions. And basically the goal of this launch fest is to try out some of the nicer looking rockets available for Realism Overhaul and see how they do. And um, yep, this mod is operating fine. We're not going to hit everything, obviously. I had a selection in mind, and actually this occurred in three different recording sessions. Uh, one where I did a lot of talking that I forgot to cut out of the video, so some of them won't have the engine sound in the video, unfortunately, because otherwise I'd be talking over myself. But uh, this one, of course, we have the music and the engine sound, which meant I recorded it without talking all the time. And uh, there'll be a few videos where um, there's no music sequence. Anyway, this is the Angara 5, same mod, Deku's mod. Deku is D-E-C-Q on the forums, and you can find a bunch of stuff, including the space shuttle system. I have not tried that out yet, so if you're looking forward to that, I'm not there yet. And Energia is another one that's a little bit more complicated, so I'll handle those separately, perhaps in subsequent videos. But, yep, this one too seems alright. The one thing that I had to fix was the orientation of the nose cones. You'll see here as the boosters go out, um, they they are obviously oriented wrong, so the separation motors uh, cause them to spin like that. Here the payload is a Salyut space station by Raider Nick, and uh, we'll see this again on another rocket where I take a look at the interior, which is pretty good. I didn't put the solar panels though and some of the other exterior bits to the Salyut. Just seeing whether Angara 5 could get to orbit uh, from Baikonur in this case. And the answer is that it's a close call. Uh, it just barely makes it, and that's without the solar panels and other bits, so we could have probably uh, reduced the food, water, and oxygen inside, and that would have made it a little bit better. But yeah, there's a lot that goes on the surface of the Salyut space station that I wouldn't be able to carry up. So is it better than Proton? It's a tight. Close call. It's a close call. This is, of course, an Ariane 5 launching out of Kuru. And the boosters are from KW Rocketry. The core is from Real Scale Boosters. And I just like the KW Rocketry boosters better. Um, it's not, they don't quite look exactly how they look in real life, but I've gotten used to them over time, basically. The one thing is the thrust curve seems to be wrong on them because right there you saw they're separating at the correct time. But they were carried for like about half a minute after they had gone out. And they didn't go out with the normal thrust tail off. I checked the configuration and it seems like they do have a thrust tail off in the configuration. So I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with them. Uh, like something has overwritten them or something like that. They used to work just fine. So there's a bit of a problem there. Uh, we have fairing separation. And what we have at the top of this is a TDRS satellite. Obviously, that would not be launched by an Ariane 5, though it could be launched by an Ariane 5 quite easily, uh, despite the need for the Ariane 5 to pitch up constantly. But yeah, the upper stage could get to GTO. Unfortunately, the upper stage can't get all the way to geosynchronous orbit, and in other words, do the circularization burn, only because this engine does not have two ignitions. It only has one. If it had two ignitions, it could have gotten it to geostationary orbit just fine. It has enough delta V. So, but anyway, it's, uh, it is what it is. So here it is making orbit and actually it's uh, trying to go all the way out to GTO and I end up stopping it short because I didn't want to belabor that. And I wanted to see the animation on the TDRS satellite from Raider Nick and that is good. Rare Nick pushed me to do this launch fest, I think mainly because he knew that a lot of his stuff would be featured. Uh, he does make good models. So, yeah, uh, that is looking good. And next up is uh, Delta 2910, and this was during a live stream where people requested a lot of Delta rockets, to be honest. 
And, well, they could have requested more. You know I've done a history of Delta rockets, so I have all of them. Uh, but there we have the booster separation doing fine, the verniers doing their little paddle wiggle, which they seem to do with my particular uh, launch script with KOS. And so anyway, obviously during the live stream I was talking a lot and unfortunately I recorded that over the engine sound. And I can't separate those now. So fairing separation. And there we have a laddie probe, which is also from Raider Nick. Just expect that most of the payloads are going to be from Raider Nick unless I otherwise say so, because I was trying to find if something was wrong with one of them, uh, since he was present in the live stream, and I could needle him with it. But anyway, uh, we were checking those out, and as you see, I'm checking out the thrusters, making sure those work. Those are in interesting positions. But yep, there's the Laddie Probe, of course, originally launched by the Minotaur 5. And here we have music again for the Delta 3. Uh, oh, this was actually during the live stream too, but I didn't feel like talking much above this. This is one of those rockets people like to request me launch, uh, because I think it's a little bit ridiculous. There is a cool aspect to it, but it's still ridiculous and it didn't work very well, did it? It had three launches, and one of those were was a partial success, two failures, so... Not the best idea in rocketry ever, but yeah, booster separation fine. And here we have more booster separation. And that's weird, the way those separated. And finally, the strengthened Thor, I forget what it was. It had to be a reinforced Thor to carry the basically Delta IV upper stage. There's the RL-10 B3, carrying one of my tugs to low Earth orbit. The problem is the tug is very heavy with all of its methane and oxygen. And... Yeah, well, it managed it. It had to pitch up like that, but it managed it. So this is my little tug, which you might have seen in the Shuttle Constructed Mars mission. And of course, people requested a Delta IV Heavy. Why wouldn't they? I, the, a lot of Delta rockets got uh, worked on here. I'm going in alphabetical order, so we didn't really have a Atlas V this time. I think I did an Atlas V in like the 1.3.1 launch fest. On the Delta IV Heavy, we did launch a Salyut again, and you can see it's got a nice interior. Uh, yeah, very interesting interior for these Kerbals. I think this is the interior that Raider Nick said was uh, made by Bobcat uh, from back in the day. A lot of good interiors and models and such were made by Bobcat. Unfortunately, they haven't really been updated. So anyway, uh, here we have the Delta IV Heavy carrying that salient, and booster separation is imminent. The launch script handled the thrall down on the core just fine, as it did for Angara 5. And yep, the RS-68 is done here. And I accidentally put the fairing separation first in the staging, but then separation and the RL-10B2. Uh, so I think uh, these are from the Deltas and this are from uh, KK, Kartoffel Kuchin. And hopefully we will see an update to the mod sometime soon, uh, at least with the Deltas. I don't think it's going to have the Atlas V for various reasons. But anyway, here it sort of struggles to get the Salyut 7 into orbit and in fact we've gotten back down into the atmosphere. That was a little bit of a problem with the behavior of the launch script that I'll need to tweak, but I knew what the problem was. It'll be fairly easy to deal with. Of course, this is a Falcon Heavy. Same sort of thing with the throttling down of the core, but uh, much more lag because 27 engines. I did not speed up any of the videos because I wanted to give an accurate sense of how these things run in 1.6. I think performance-wise, it's marginally better than 1.3.1, but I had RAM issues, uh, so basically the same install took way more RAM, and it's not just because of the base game having more parts or anything like that. Uh, it, it seems like each part mod seems to take a little bit more, and of course uh, the part mods have been you know, increased in size over time, but I don't think that that's the only reason. And uh, there might have been a memory leak issue, I'm not sure. All I know is that unlike 1.3.1 with uh, this sort of install, uh, in 1.6.1 it crashed. And I think it was RAM related crashes, but I can't be sure. Anyway, here we have the end of the core, and this, this weird gap, you can hear the engine sound still, even though it's out obviously. 
and that might have been a recording problem. But we obviously had a launch script problem too because it was not uh, continuing on to the second stage. So I'll have to deal with that. That was the first uh, real puzzler. Now this is my own GSLV Mark III and uh, you might have seen the video on this before. It's got really low polys because I kept it really simple because I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, and the benefit of that is that it uh, does not uh, have too much of a physics lag. As you can see, it's running quite nicely. So, uh, well, it's just basically cylinders with the textures attached to them. And the textures I just grabbed from images of the rocket. So if you look really close to them, they don't look very good. But as long as you keep a decent distance, it's not too bad. <laughs> but uh, the meshes are not very complicated. I think that helps with the lag. At least I've noticed that my rockets do not seem to lag very much. But anyway, of course this one didn't have very many engines. And coming off of the Falcon Heavy, it's not a very good comparison. But anyway, uh, separation of first stage ignition of the CE-20 engine. And this is the cryogenic 200 kilonewton engine. It had to pitch up a little bit. But uh, probably it didn't have to have to, but anyway, uh, we could have launched on a slightly different trajectory to help it out. This is Raider Nix Terra Probe, which I picked mainly because it was shiny. And there we have orbit and a little bit of delta. Uh, that's enough for geostationary transfer orbit if we wanted to have it burn for that and continue on with this probe. Technically, this probe, I think, is supposed to go into a polar orbit, though. So, yeah. Uh, little antenna there. Not too sure about the animations. I think maybe the solar panel had to go first. But there we have it. And next, Raider Nix Cosmos 2. Uh, this was during the live stream. In fact, you'll note that it was during the Starlink launch. I have that in the bottom right hand corner. And the, the thrusters, the first stage engine was wiggling a lot. And that was annoying. But we got to the second stage just fine. Rear Nick uh, definitely wanted to see this rocket because of the funny lettering on the side. And it's carrying a Mariner probe. And so it's actually headed to polar orbit, which the Mariner probes are not supposed to do. But it doesn't really matter. We are just uh, doing... It's basically a rocket remix here. We're do tossing things up with the wrong payloads and possibly the wrong trajectories sometimes. Though, most of the time we're launching from the correct locations. I think all the time we were launching from the correct locations. This is from Placetsk, and we have the Cosmos 3M, which also has the wiggling problem, like the Cosmos 2. But SAS solved that, and so sometimes SAS helps, sometimes SAS doesn't when it comes to KOS. It's weird. At least with my launch script, it's, yeah, it's strange. Uh, this rocket does hot stage the verniers first, and so that's what you saw happening there. And fairing separation. This is a deep space probe of some sort. Uh, I forget which one this is. It does have an ion engine on it. So we separate it off, and we test the ion engine. Xenon gas, and... Well, we presume it's working, but we're not going to wait the 200 days for it to finish burning. Uh, next up is my own Long March 3B. and uh, Except for the fairings. I did not make the fairings on this one. That's just procedural fairings. And we are launching from uh, the... Uh, was it Zichang? I think it is. Uh, the central Chinese location, which always ends up dropping boosters on villages. But, you know, it is very scenic. There are plus sides to this. It's a pretty magnificent launch site. I mean, with the obvious downside. Which we are about to have here. Booster separation, a little bit vigorous. Uh, now, I put separatrons on, so maybe I should have toned down the separatrons. And we have hot staging on the second stage. And the second stage does have verniers. Fairing separation reveals a Cygnus. As with the Salyut, the Cygnus doesn't have its solar panels, though I just threw it on as a dummy payload. And it also doesn't have supplies, so it's basically dry. And we have a separation of the second stage, and there's the cryogenic third stage. Two engines, 
Oh, wait, the Cygnus engine also lit, so we have to shut that down. Now one thing I noticed was the lack of decoupler. Normally I'm used to procedural fairings automatically having a decoupler, and so I filled with it. I thought that that was going to activate the decoupling in the staging, instead it actually did the decoupling. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know why a decoupler wasn't showing up for the procedural fairing, so that threw me off. Uh, this was during the Starlink launch and live on Twitch, and so unfortunately we don't have the audio of 30 uh, NK-15 engines firing here, but this is the N1 rocket, obviously, carrying a Skylab, and uh, Radernix N1 and Radernix Skylab, but uh, yeah, Radernick insisted on having full particles on the engines to lag it as much as possible. The Starlink thing happened during this, so we actually have to pause the rocket launch and see these guys float off, float off in their very unique way. And then, continue uh, with the lag. I think it was laggier after the Starlink thing, that, uh, after I paused it, than it was before. But here it is. 30 engines is just gonna lag it out anyway. But it wasn't. A, I, I thought it wasn't as bad as it was in 1.3, to be honest. So here we we are gonna have hot staging. That's a good hot staging. And sorry for the lack of audio, obviously. One little faux pas was that I accidentally had a toggle action group one in the launch script, and action group one happened to be the Apollo telescope mount there and I think some other parts on the Skylab, but mainly the Apollo telescope mount. And then we had a bad hot staging, probably a bad timing issue there, where the second stage hadn't gone out when the third stage started to do its hot staging thing. But yeah, we can't retract the Apollo telescope mount, so we basically had to fly with it extended. And now the question was whether the fairings would get that would explode it. And no, so we were able to uh, eventually time warp to dislodge that additional fairing. And it did get to orbit, but then the capacity of the N1 is 90 tons to orbit, so Skylab wasn't too big a deal for it. The Skylab is about 82 tons, so quite doable. Uh, SLS Block 1 can also manage Skylab, uh, though you have to get the launch about uh, pretty pretty good. Anyway, so so panels extended, and I also decided to take a look at the interior. And this one is uh, nice. It's got little couches for them. It's got the hex grid thing going. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as things go, it's okay. <laughs> I like it. Next up is the Proton rocket carrying the Proton 4 satellite, which I believe is the largest satellite in mass launched to orbit successfully at 17 tons. Uh, the Polyus spacecraft, which was launched on Energia, did not make orbit, but that was much heavier at 80 tons. And of course, when I say satellite, I don't mean crewed missions or anything like that. So, and of course, not dry stages. So it's a particular thing. Anyway, uh, the first staging was successful. Good hot staging there. Um, for, uh, this was one during the live stream. I managed to not talk during the start of the launch, but I talked afterwards. So yeah, there's the basically the Proton 4 was built into the top of the Proton rocket. Here we had an awkward staging, and I think uh, Raider Nick said that that was fixed. Uh, it was something wrong with that decoupler. But yeah, it gave it a kick, but the launch script managed to recorrect and get it to orbit successfully without any problems. And I got to deploy the solar panels, which I like. Those are fancy. Those are very fancy solar panels right there. So we got that there. I wish I had the mass reading in the vehicle info. That would have been nice. I decided to put all the info up instead of like doing cinematic stuff because I wanted you to see the details of the launches. And uh, this one is a particular one. People have a lot of trouble with the Saturn 1B and with good reason. You can't fully fuel the Apollo service module. Otherwise it's not gonna make orbit. Uh, I suggest 10 to 20 percent will be plenty, plenty for everything that you want to do in low Earth orbit. Uh, at 20 percent, I think it has like a thousand meters per second of delta V or more. Um, here we have staging. Um, the other thing is this J2. You have to make sure you have the right version. There are a lot of versions J2. And if you have the default version, the tank will have the wrong fuel mixture. And so if you just put a J2 on and you use this tank, 
your fuel mixture is going to be wrong and you're not going to get as much delta v as you should so you have to watch out for that this is the base version of the j2 so it's not as efficient as later ones and also the launch script had a little bit of a problem there but we basically ran out just short which is fine i just completed orbit with the service module there the service module engine looking good this is from fasa the rocket is from fasa and with no changes and it still works fine i believe now this is the fasa saturn 5 there is also a deq saturn 5 and i think probably the best thing is to mix and match them to some extent um, now this requires a very accurate launch and we didn't get off to a very good start you see with that roll going wrong there that's because i didn't tell the launch script the, our correct orientation i think was expecting a different orientation off of the launch pad it recovered eventually but that was a rocky start now the thing about this is you have to be pay very close attention to how much fuel you're actually carrying and make sure that's appropriate for your mission the f1 engines also seem to be not the version for the later uh, Saturn V's at least uh, if you put the it depends uh, you'll have to look into that I had to under fuel the first stage to make sure it got off the launch pad at all I accidentally separated the skirt at the wrong time that was a problem uh, that's supposed to go later along with the launch escape system there um, here we also did have the shutting down of the center engines on both stages as necessary and of course, you'll have to do the same thing with the J2s here as with the Saturn 1. Check which version they are, make sure the fuel mixture is right, because the FASA tanks are preloaded with fuel and they might not be quite, quite correct. You can actually get the actual burn times for each stage for Apollo 11 or whichever Apollo mission and judge from that how much fuel you need in each tank. Anyway, here, the last launch we have for this video is the Titan 4B. And it comes with that tower from Raider Nick. It's carrying the Cassini probe, as I think it actually should. Uh, unfortunately, our trajectory was sideways. I'll have to take a look at why that is. I believe we were launching from Vandenberg into a polar orbit for some reason, even though that's not what Cassini does. But anyway, uh, we might actually be... Yeah, we're, we're actually headed north from Vandenberg, which is completely wrong, of course. Uh, don't do that. Anyway, booster separation was fine, and we'll take a look. Uh, fairing separation was good, except I don't know if... Yeah, no, that was... Uh, the fairing separation was supposed to happen there. The starting of the second stage was not, so I'm not entirely sure what, what was going on with that. Why did that stage... Anyway, the second stage kept going. I didn't want to interrupt the launch script. I was curious to see what would happen. And the first stage started uh, messing around with that stage because it didn't go out yet. That flew off. And then the next stage, the Centaur stage, lit up and separated and everything went awry. Amazingly, after all that mess, uh, it did manage to catch itself. Uh, it's slowing down there. And it made orbit, but of course it had a lot of Delta V. It says enough delta v to launch cassini quite far so uh we had plenty to spare there anyway uh, with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this launch fest if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time